Hi everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live event. Time for the talk, Puberty Information Session for parents for grade five and six students. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Today's workshop will focus on puberty and adolescent development. Some of this workshop may be a review pew, but a refresher will be good since puberty wasn't exactly yesterday for most of us. The goal of this workshop is to be able to support you in your efforts as a parent to have an open dialogue with your children about puberty. Because we understand that sometimes this conversation of puberty can be an uncomfortable one. We will have some discussions surrounding the changes that will happen during puberty. We will discuss the physical, emotional, cognitive, and social uh, changes that happen in adolescence during puberty, the different ways that you can be an askable and approachable adult, and how to find credible resources. We will then give you the chance to ask any questions you may have about talking to your child about puberty. Before we start this presentation, we want to review some housekeeping items. Although we're not wearing masks in order to film this presentation, we are following all COVID-19 protocols. We are physically distancing and have a barrier between us. Also, due to the sensitive nature of this topic and hosting this on a public platform, we are unable to discuss some topics relating to the anatomical changes of puberty. However, we will share some links and resources for you to use when discussing this topic with your child. We welcome you to use the live chat to ask questions and share comments, but please remain respectful. If there are some questions that we cannot answer over Facebook Live, we will be sharing the link so you can speak to one of our nurses from Niagara Parents. So my name is Austin and I'm the public health nurse in the school health program. I'm primarily the, the nurse for the Grimsby and West St. Catharines Elementary Schools. However, due to COVID-19, we have a team-based approach to support all schools in the region. And my name is Ashley. I'm also one of the public health nurses on the school health program. I primarily support the Francophone elementary and secondary schools throughout the region. Austin and I, as well as many other school nurses, have supported Niagara schools with growth and development curriculum over the years. And some of your kids will see us in the coming weeks talking to their classes. Some of the topics that we possibly could be supporting this year in your child's school will be for classes grades four to eight. It may include topics such as puberty, reducing the risk of sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy, as well as learning about gender diversity. All of the information is evidence informed and based on the Ontario curriculum framework. It is important to us that kids get good quality information in a format that will encourage them to talk to their parents, guardian, or a trusted adult in their lives. We have two main objectives that we would like to meet today. At the end of this presentation, we would like you to be able to uh, feel comfortable having a discussion with your children about puberty and know where to access additional supports and resources. When we talk with children about puberty in the classrooms, we always like to start our presentation with discussing what we call the four OKs. These can be used before talking with your children about puberty. And so what they are is that it's completely okay for your child to feel embarrassed or uncomfortable to be curious and to ask questions. This is the time for your child to ask you questions and get the right information about their body and its changes. It's also okay to not know this information already. Some of your children may have heard or learned some of this information before, or your child may be hearing this for the first time from you. It's also okay and good for your child to know about the changes of other sexes. This helps us to understand one another better and to be respectful of the changes that each individual person will go through. Now everyone has heard of the talk and it's something that a lot of parents and children dread. But despite what our title says, the talk is really not just a one-time talk. It's meant to, be an on, meant to be an ongoing conversation that we encourage you to have with your children. Rather than a one-time discussion, we want to help you feel comfortable creating a space in which your child feels that they are able to ask you the difficult questions about their bodies and sexual health. And you are able to answer those difficult questions using credible resources. Prior to COVID, this presentation was sometimes hosted at your school by one of the school health nurses from Niagara Region Public Health. And it could have been called numerous things from puberty information session, puberty night, or puberty information night. So why is this information so important? Well, talking to your children about sexuality and puberty helps them to grow into healthy adults. When children are educated and comfortable seeking information about their sexual health, they are more likely to have a healthier relationship with their body and make informed choices. It is good for children to have the right information about changes that happen during puberty, 
as sometimes the information they get from the media or from friends may not be correct or understood. This is a great chance for parents and children to get the facts and to have a discussion about the changes of puberty. It's okay to not know all the answers when your child comes to you, but it is important to know how you can seek out credible information, help them find information that they can trust depending on their age, and more importantly, how to be open and approachable. Now before we dive into the grade five and six content, we just wanna take a moment to review some reminders about diversity. Diversity can mean many things to each of us. Diversity is all the ways that we're different from each other. While we discuss the physical, social, cognitive, and behavioral changes that adolescents go through, we'll be using language that respects the diversity of all children. As a parent, you can play a very important role in helping your children learn uh, to recognize stigma, discrimination, and bullying, and develop respect for sexual and gender diversity. Many use the terms gender and sex to mean the same thing, but it's not correct. The better that you understand terms like biological or assigned sex, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation, the better you may understand yourself and how you relate to other people. This slide will hopefully provide a better understanding of these four traits and how they differ and how they make us the people we are. The first we have here is biological or assigned sex, which is the physical characteristics that categorize people as male, female, or intersex at birth, including genitalia, body shape, hormones, and chromos chromosomes. The next is gender identity. This is a person's internal sense of identity as female, male, both, or neither, regardless of their biological assigned sex at birth. The next is gender expression. This is how a person presents their gender. This can include appearance, name, pronoun, and social behavior. And finally, we have sexual orientation, which is a person's emotional or sexual attraction to other people. It can be fluid and may or may not reflect their sexual behaviors. If you're interested in learning more, a great local resource for more support or information is Quest Community Health Center. All right, so now I'll take a look at the overview of the curriculum expectations for both grade five and six. The health and physical education curriculum helps students learn the skills and knowledge they need to lead healthy, active lives and make healthy and safe choices. There are four parts to the curriculum, one of which is the healthy living section. Within that section, students learn about human development and sexual health. Puberty can be a very stressful time for children, and one way to help children cope with this stage of change is to provide them with the knowledge about the changes in their bodies so that they're prepared. In grade five, students will learn about the factors that may affect the development of a person's understanding of themselves and their personal identity, including their sexual orientation. Some topics that might be covered include body image and self-acceptance. They'll also learn about the reproductive system and how the body changes during puberty. They'll learn about the process of menstruation and sperm production, and the emotional and interpersonal stresses related to puberty. In grade six, students will learn about the impacts of viewing sexually explicit media, including pornography, for an example, how it leads to a limited or distorted understanding of relationships, reinforces harmful gender norms, and promotes an unrealistic or idealized body image. Uh, the next, they'll learn about the physical, social, and emotional changes that occur in adolescence and how to build a healthy foundation for relationships. They will learn how to make decisions in their personal relationships that show respect for themselves and others, recognizing the importance of consent and clear communication. They'll also learn how stereotype and assumptions about gender, race, sexual orientation, ethnicity, culture, and abilities can affect how a person feels about themselves, their feelings, or belonging and relationships with others. And they'll also finally learn about the appropriate ways to respond and challenge assumptions, stereotypes, homophobia, and racism. To learn more about the curriculum expectations, please review A Parent's Guide to Health and Physical Education, grades one to eight, the 2019 document listed below. Our school health program also has teaching tools available for teachers online that can assist them in delivering this content. Please find the link below if you'd like to review them. Perfect, so where does it all begin? Now we'll take some time to review what puberty is and the changes that occur. This information is very similar to what is shared with students in the classroom. So puberty is the stage of development when a person changes from a child to an adult. When a child's body is ready to begin puberty, the pituitary gland, think of a cherry pit in size, 
which is located at the bottom of the brain, sends out chemical messages called hormones to get things started. These hormones travel in the bloodstream to different parts of the body, depending on whether the child has a vagina or a penis. For those with a vagina, the hormones target glands called ovaries, and in those with a penis, they target glands called testicles. Both of these glands are then signaled to start making their own hormones. The ovaries start making the hormone estrogen and progesterone, and the testicles start making a hormone called testosterone. These hormones then travel in the bloodstream and tell other parts of the body to start changing. They cause changes, allowing children's bodies to grow into adult bodies. The changes of puberty happen at different times, similar to a personal alarm clock in the fact that no two clocks are set exactly the same. We use this analogy when talking to kids in grade five about how we can all set an alarm clock at different times to get up in the morning for school and even with everybody getting up at slightly different waking times, everyone arrives in time to start class. According to teachingsexualhealth.ca, those who produce estrogen usually experience puberty between 8 and 16 years, and those who produce testosterone usually change between 10 and 18 years. Someone who is at either end of the age range when they start puberty may either feel embarrassed, left out, teased or that something is wrong with them. This is a common emotion to experience. The changes are generally complete by 18 for those with the vagina and 20 for those with the penis. The timing of puberty is heavily influenced by family genes, nutrition throughout childhood, and physical activity levels. So let's quickly review some of the physical changes that occur. For those of, with a vagina, they will produce the hormone estrogen, experience hip widening, uh, develop breasts, get their period or menstruation, grow hair in their underarms, pubic area, uh, legs, and arms. And all children will experience acne, perspiration and body odor, growth spurts both in height and weight, and their skin and hair will become more oily. And for those with a penis, they will produce the hormone testosterone, experience shoulders and chest broadening, notice their voice deepening, and their genitals growing larger, they will grow hair in their underarms, pubic area, face, chest, legs, backs, and arms, and begin this, the process of spermatogenesis, which is the production of sperm. Now with all of these physical changes, it's really important to discuss and reinforce with your children the importance of personal hygiene practices. This includes reviewing with them showering and bathing, the use of deodorant, changing and laundering of clothes, hair care, acne care, and the possibility of shaving. As you probably already know, you may find yourself needing to remind them of these personal hygiene practices. Remember that it's also important that children continue to get an adequate amount of sleep and eat a well-balanced diet at this stage of development. Now, due to the nature of the Facebook Live event, we will not be reviewing the reproductive uh, system and the anatomy today. However, the school health team has created some videos that are on our website. We encourage you to sit with your child and watch these videos together. Links will be shared in the chat box to where you can find these videos. The videos that we have are the female reproductive system, the male reproductive system, and personal care during menstruation. So now we'll look at some of the emotional changes that occur. So children at this age may be sensitive and have strong reactions. They will experience emotional ups and downs that can lead to increased conflict. Your child's brain is still learning how to control and express emotions in a grown-up way. Remember that the brain continues to develop until the age of 25. Young people get better at reading and processing other people's emotions as they get older. While they're developing these skills, they can sometimes misread facial expressions or body language. Also, their self-esteem is often affected by appearance or by how others their age think they look. As they develop, children might compare their bodies with those of friends and peers. Children at this age may also start to have romantic interest in another person. Now for the social changes. Children at this age start to define themselves through things like their environment, their friends, clothes, culture, and social media. Many social changes occur when going through puberty. One of these changes is that children start to be influenced more by their friends. They learn that a friend can have different ideas from them and customs from them and still be their friend. They start to have stronger and more complex friendships and relationships, and they begin to feel more peer pressure. 
Children will also begin to seek more independence and responsibility, and they'll often look for new experiences. And you'll start to notice that they think more about what is right and what is wrong. And as they start to question more things, your words and actions will, sh will uh, shape your child's sense of right and wrong. And finally, they will begin to communicate in more in different ways, such as through things like social media, cell phones, and the internet. Cognitive changes also occur, meaning changes to the way your child thinks. Children may begin to feel embarrassed about some of the changes in puberty. You may notice that they may talk with you less, or that you may have to start to be a little more creative about ways you talk to them. One way to assist with this is what we call creating teachable moments. They'll also develop personal value and leadership skills. These can be taken from different sources such as family, culture, friends, etc. And children start to define themselves through their environment. They begin to define themselves based on who their friends are, how they want to spend their time, their talents, or their interests. So it is helpful for children to know that there are a lot of changes going on that they will see as their bodies develop, but that they may feel changes as their brain develops as well. These changes make the world appear more complex and sometimes unfair. In a book titled Teen Brain, Teen Mind by Dr. Ron Clavier, there are some really great stories that explain how the teen brain functions and the challenges that come with it. One of the analogies discussed in this book is the idea that as adolescence begins, Children are suddenly stripped of their comfortable child brain. So think of an old calculator. With this brain, the child sees things as simple. Then a child all of a sudden gets this new brain that is much more powerful. Think of a fancy new computer or software system. This brain is now able to see a complex world with many different ways to see things. Where frustration grows for teenagers is that they're unaware of the switch in their computer system or their brain. What used to work for them no longer does. So this is an intense learning process for your teen. This is why it's so crucial to provide the information to your child ahead of time so that they're prepared to deal with these changes. Similarly to how we prepare those who will get their period or menstruation, it's really important that children also understand the changes that their brain will go through. Now being an askable adult, being an askable adult means that you're open, knowledgeable, a source of, that you're an open and knowledgeable source of support. This doesn't come naturally to everyone. It takes a lot of effort. In the long run, it can help you and your children build a, a strong bond to navigate adolescence. To be an askable adult, you need to first self-assess, be aware of your feelings about sexual health and how they may influence your interactions with your child. Think about back about how you learned or experienced puberty. Was it positive or was it negative? The next is having empathy. Try to put yourself in their shoes uh, when they are asking the tough and surprising questions. What have they been experiencing recently or could they be in physical or emotional pain? Remember that it's an ongoing conversation. Short, consistent check-ins are more effective than one lengthy, the talk, and nonverbal cues. Notice how you react when your child asks you a question. Does your body tense up? Do you redirect the conversation? Do you laugh it off? What we say can be just as, what we don't say can be just as impactful as what we do say. So that's why it's important to lecture less and listen more. Carving out time to listen with, your, with intention to your child can be one of the most valuable things that we can do as parents. Look for everyday opportunities to talk, to your, talk and listen to your child. Some examples can include on your drive home from school, while watching Netflix, or right before bed. And finally, saying, I don't know. No one holds all of the answers, and it's okay. It's okay to tell your child, I'll get back to you, or I need to think about that, and then take the time to go and do your research. Your child really does see you as a role model and credible source of information. They want to get health information from you based on the loving and trusting relationship that you have. It's important that you discuss sexual health with your child. This will help your child make healthy, informed decisions now and in the future. That doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to have the conversation and it might feel super awkward. So here are some really great tips and tricks for any age group. One, it's never too late to start the conversation. Don't try to cover everything at once, but also don't worry if you think that you've said too much. Two, keep the language simple and age appropriate. Answer questions, but try not to lecture. Three, teach your child that their body belongs to them. This includes teaching them that they're allowed to tell people they don't want to be touched, hugged, tickled, etc., even if it's a friend or a relative. Four, 
use proper terms for body parts and bodily functions. It can be confusing to children to have cute names for some body parts and not for others. This can also help protect your child from abuse, as they will have the words to talk about a touch or a feeling that's not okay. Five, watch for teachable moments. Talk about and help them understand issues as they come up on social media, TV, in movies, ads, music, the news, or in the community. This can also start a talk about your values and beliefs. Six, find out what they already know. This is a great way to start a conversation, just finding out what they know and then giving them the right information. Next is seven, talk about more than the facts. Along with the facts about the body and how it works, talk about your feelings, relationships, and how they affect other people. Eight is provide resources. Recommend websites that they can look through, like teachingsexualhealth.ca or sexandyou.ca. Nine, you don't have to know it all. Your child will teach you just as much as you teach them. And 10, encourage your child to talk about what they think. Talking openly can help your child understand your values and give you a better idea of the values that they're learning. 11, let them know what is socially appropriate and inappropriate. It's important that they learn and understand other people's values may be different from theirs. And finally, when your child asks you a question, do your best to answer them or do your best to answer it at the time. If you don't know the answer, suggest that you find out together or tell them that you'll find out and get back to them. Don't put it off as they might think that it's not an okay topic or not an important enough topic, topic to talk about. So not surprisingly, children often have a lot of questions when it comes to puberty. Parents may feel uncomfortable or nervous for questions that they may not know the answers to or just know how to answer. Teaching Sexual Health is a really great website that includes a list of common questions with prepared answers for you. We will include the link in the comments below. It is important to be comfortable with the terminology and to reflect on your personal, family, or religious values. Also, be prepared that because of social media, it may open the door to other questions about sexual health. Knowing where to find credible and reliable information is an important aspect when preparing to talk to your children about puberty or to assist you in finding answers to questions you may not know the answer to. We will link the resources in the comments for you. Another great option is to connect with one of our public health nurses at Niagara Parents. Niagara Region Public Health also offers positive parenting program called Triple P. In this program, you and are in this personal and thorough program about parenting in a positive way, you'll learn parenting strategies that you can use to adapt to suit your family's needs. During this program, you'll spend eight hours of time with a public health nurse over two to four virtual group sessions. For more information, connect with Niagara Parents. Another great option is that Ophia has created a guide that focuses on creating opportunities for parents or caregivers to continue puberty education conversations with their children at home following what is taught in the classroom. This guide is geared toward parents with children who will experience menstruation or their period. If you're interested in a copy, you can create an account on Ophia's website to download the free copy. Perfect, so that is it for today's content. Now, if anybody has some questions, we'll take a look at those now and see what we can answer. Now, one question we did receive beforehand is, at what age should parents start talking to their children about puberty? With the understanding that, you're, uh, that some may start puberty at the age of eight years old, it's best to start talking to your child about puberty before that stage so your child is prepared for the physical uh, and emotional changes that will occur. If you, don't start or if you start early and you talk to your child often, then talking about puberty as they get older will be a lot easier. Don't always wait for your child to initiate the discussion. A great question and answer. Is it done, Austin? All right. It looks like we have another question coming in. So, is it normal for teens to have irregular period cycles? So, when a teen first starts their period, um, it is very common for their cycle to be irregular for the first uh, year or two of their menstrual cycle. Uh, but if you have any questions or concerns about that, you can certainly speak with their healthcare provider. Looks like there's 
No other questions? I don't know if you're seeing any there, Austin. No, I'm not seeing any other questions. All right. Well, we want to take the time to say thank you for everybody who participated this evening and joined our Facebook Live event. We hope you gained some valuable insight as to how to talk with your children about puberty. And again, if you have questions following this, you can certainly talk to Niagara parents.